Welcome back. We're behind the handlebars, spinning the cranks, and putting some dirt underneath the wheels. I'm Scott, and this is BikeRide.com Reviews. And today, we're taking a look at the Magicycle Deer ESUV. Now, this is a big bike, and it's got some big claims coming out from the brand about it. Apparently, this bike was inspired as a fusion of a few different genres in the e-bike range, and they fused all of those together to come up with the ESUV Deer. Now, it's a big, bike and they make a few claims about it saying that it's going to dominate any mountain bike trail that it gives a smooth confident comfortable ride over varied terrain and that it's an off-road beast now we're going to take a look and hopefully this bike is able to put up a few tricks of its own because it's going to take more than just a few tricks to back up those claims and as we start to put it to the test hopefully it doesn't just disappear in a puff of smoke this is the magicycle deer esuv and we're going to put it to the test So what is the Magicycle ESUV? At first look, it might be a little bit confusing because we haven't seen a lot of other e-bikes that are labeled something like an SUV, something that we normally see with a car. Now, what Magicycle is trying to get across with this is the fact that this is kind of a multi-purpose bike. We're looking at a full suspension bike that's also outfitted and available to come with racks, so kind of a commuter style. It's got a full suspension frame, beefy four inch tires on 26 inch rims, and it's supposed to be more of an off-road styled bike. Now it is available in two different frame sizes. We have the step through, which we have offered here, which comes with attached fenders and a rear rack. And then there's also a step over model, which does not have those fenders and rear rack. So overall, it's really built to be an off-road bike meant to give you a comfortable ride. And they're trying to really fuse together and make something that appeals to a lot of different riders with this, being able to use it off-road, on-road, as a commuter and apparently able to trek and go for extended long ranges and over varied terrain with those large tires. So they're trying to bring something for everyone with the Magicycle Deer. So let's get going with the pros. The first pro that we have for the Magicycle Deer is the fact that it does have quite a smooth and comfortable ride over varied terrain, especially from a seated position, which is something that's kind of surprising with these types of bikes. Now, as a mountain biker, I'm used to having to stand normally when I'm riding, even a full suspension bike. With the Magicycle Deer, it's a little bit of a different experience. You've got quite a large seat, and the general geometry and the handlebars on at least this low step model that we're dealing with really make it a little bit more more comfortable to ride from a seated position. And this is where that full suspension setup really comes into play and adds to this pro. Having the full suspension really allows you to travel over a lot of different terrain, including bumps and rocks, and allow that to be very comfortable. I was traveling up to 25 miles an hour over rocky, rooty terrain in a seated position. And although I was being jostled a little bit, it was overall quite a comfortable ride and you can really zip along an assorted amount of pathways and trails, even off-road. The next pro for the Magicycle Deer is the fact that it gives a powerful performance in its element. Now, don't get me wrong. This is definitely a heavy bike coming in at around 93 pounds but it's powered by a nice 750 watt rear motor and it has a reasonably sized battery. Also, it's operating at 52 volts, which is giving it a definite power boost. These elements combine together to make the bike really move nicely when under power. When it's under power from that 750 watt motor, you can really feel the weight slip away and you forget that the bike weighs quite the amount that it does. It's pleasant to carve and it can really climb most hills that you're gonna deal with with ease. I didn't find any steep hills were outside of its wheelhouse. The only time that I found it would have trouble climbing was in steep, slippery terrain, where sometimes the added torque of the motor really was its undoing and a challenge. But in general, the bike is very measured and when you're riding it in the type of terrain that it's meant to be ridden on, double track roads, logging roads, gravel roads, or anything that's wider than a single track mountain bike trail, the bike does very well. And that full suspension and powerful motor really come together to give a powerful and playful ride. And finally for the pros, comes in with that display and the customization that you can find inside of the settings. I was impressed by the display and the general customization. 
It's a large display, full color, it's quite easy to see, and it gives you a lot of information. And once you open up those settings, it's quite impressive. There's a ton of additional settings that you can change, and you can really change many aspects of not only the way that the bike displays information and the way that you interact with the bike, but actual technical features of the bike as well. So you can change the voltage of the bike and the voltage of the battery. You can change the amount of magnets on that speed assist. You can change the amount of assist for each assist level, and you can also change the amount of assist levels. So as it comes shipped, it has seven different assist levels as well as a P mode. You can change that so if you would prefer to only have three, five, seven, or nine assist levels, you can set one of those and you can also make it so that there is a zero or there isn't a zero. So each of those settings could go from either zero to seven or one to seven. It's a little bit confusing, but just in general, you can really set up a lot of these features and the way you interact with the bike so that it's fully customizable. And I could see some people that have some advanced knowledge and really like to play with their controllers and their motors, having a lot of fun with this bike and being able to unlock some extra capability. And now we've got to take a look at what didn't work out so well. So let's get started with the cons. Coming in as the first con is that this is not a true e-mountain bike. Now, as a mountain biker, I have to refute a few claims that I saw on the website specifically about the deer. Now, one of these claims is that this e-bike will dominate any mountain bike trail. And the second claim is that the full suspension setup is what makes the deer like a true e-mountain bike. Now, I'm gonna start this off by saying that the full suspension setup definitely makes the Deer a capable bike on a variety of off-road terrain. But there's a few features about the Deer that are specifically keeping it from being a true e-mountain bike and will not allow you to ride on some more advanced mountain bike terrain. And so I don't want people to become confused when they see some of these claims that the company's making on the website. The items that are really holding the Deer back from being a true e-mountain bike are the overall weight of the bike and the fact that it's powered by a hub motor is really going to change the weight of the bike and throw the weight towards the rear and also having a bike that's 92 pounds and having those four inch fat tires on the front are really just going to be an uncomfortable combo when you get into some of the more tight and more technical terrain that you might feature. The other aspect of this is that you're not going to be able to easily pop that front tire up and over obstacles so it's going to be harder for you to pop to come down off of a drop or to get up over another item. Having that rear hub motor is also gonna make the weighting of the bike feel very strange if you do manage to get this bike in the air. While it is capable of jumping, you need to have quite a bit of power and speed applied, so this is not really gonna help you in a lot of general trail situations. I really found that as soon as I got into any kind of single track or smaller trails, I was having a lot of trouble maneuvering the cumbersome bike, and I was having a lot of trouble applying the right amount of power for the situation that I was in. The other feature about having this hub unit on the back and not having any kind of a torque sensor is the fact that it can be quite challenging to apply the right amount of power for the right situation. It kind of has more of an on-off feel to the motor. So when you find yourself in slippery situations, if you're coming up a muddy incline or you're dealing with any kind of wet stone or wet wood, like a wet bridge, you'll find that the back tire is very easy to slide. You can slide in practically any assist level and especially when using the throttle. So you need to be quite careful in some of the more technical terrain. Another item that's worrisome when thinking about taking this bike on off-road trails consistently is to do with the rear two pivot points where that suspension connects to the rear end of the bike you'll notice that this is very wobbly. Now it doesn't affect you in general riding, but the fact that you can get a lot of wobble out of those two rear pivot points, and there's only two points that are really connecting that whole rear suspension together, I really would wonder about the longevity of those rear points. And if I was looking for a stress point that is gonna be the first area to fail, I'd be looking at the bearings where that suspension is connecting the rear end on this heavy bike if you were gonna take this and do some serious off-road trails. It is worthy to note that this is the low step model. And some of these issues with off-road performance could be rectified by the high step model, which will have a little bit less flex in the frame. And the absence of those fenders and the rear rack will allow you more ability to position your and probably bring down the overall weight of the unit. 
because of this, the high step model may be a little bit better on the trails, but I still think many of these points are gonna imply because it's not gonna have a torque sensor, still be powered by the same motor, and it's still gonna be a heavy bike riding on these four inch fat tires. Our next con is gonna be some misleading battery claims. Now, Magicycle claims that this deer will reach 60 to 80 miles off of a full charge. And we fell pretty short in our range test. We we're operating the bike at max assist level, so level seven, and we managed to get about 27 miles of total range out of the unit. Now, this is pretty good range in general for a heavy bike operating on max assist, but you will notice that it's considerably lower than that 60 mile range that they're claiming that you could get out of this bike. So I think that this is more a matter of the company choosing to highlight ranges from the lower assist levels. Maybe at an assist level of one or two, you'd be able to get 60 to 80 miles out of this bike. But let's be honest, with a 93 pound bike, who's gonna be riding it in an assist level of one or two? I would prefer if a company like this would be more transparent about the amount of range that you can get at high assist because 30 miles is honestly a pretty good range in general. I don't see a lot of consumers being upset about the amount of range that you can get with this battery but it does fall short of those 60 mile total range so they could be upset when looking at it compared to the max that you're apparently supposed to be able to get finally for the cons we've got the fact that the bike is a tight fit for taller riders this bike is supposed to fit people five foot three to six foot eight now as a six foot rider I personally felt a little bit cramped on the bike due to the fact that I could not extend the seat post any further to get a more optimal pedal position. I found that my knee was still a little bit too bent and I wasn't quite in the right position. And so I don't really see how somebody taller than me, especially someone six foot eight, would be able to fit on this bike and feel overly comfortable. So again, we've got a situation where we have a little bit of a misleading claim from the brand about the sizing of the bike and anyone over six foot should definitely be wary before they purchase this bike. And finally, you should be aware that this is a big, heavy bike. Now they are transparent about this, stating that it comes in at 92 pounds, and for all appearances, the deer looks like a pretty large e-bike with those four inch tires. But when you have it in person, it's definitely big. It's probably one of the heaviest e-bikes that we've dealt with, and this thing is a chore to get onto a bike rack or to move around in general. So you're not gonna be able to move this bike upstairs. You're not gonna to wanna to lift it onto a bike rack very often, or at least not without help. You're probably gonna to wanna to have a bike rack that has some kind of a ramp to get this bike on if you are planning on taking it on a ramp often. And there's only gonna be a few bike ramps out there that are gonna actually support this almost 100 pound bike weight. So overall, it's a heavy unit. It's pretty tough to maneuver if it's not being powered. And you're gonna to need to have a level ground storage unit to put this in, something that's gonna be covered and away from the elements. So it's a big bike, be wary. So what does it do best? I have to say after riding the Magicycle and putting a fair amount of miles on this deer unit, the best thing about the Magicycle deer is the fact that it has a very consistent and comfortable ride over varied terrain in a seated position. So it's not a lot of bikes that you're able to really cruise at about 25 miles an hour down a bumpy gravel road from a seated position and feel pretty comfortable. That rear suspension on this unit definitely works hard and I had a lot of fun riding this around the forest trails and gravel roads. I didn't have as much fun taking it onto the smaller single track, but on any double track or wider paths that are a little bit bumpy, it's quite pleasurable to ride. It's also great on the pavement because that suspension is gonna soak up any bumps that are in your way and that motor is able to comfortably and smoothly power you up to high speeds. Another interesting thing about this bike is that the throttle is able to actually power you all the way up to 28 miles an hour, which is not something we see on a lot of these other bikes. So having that throttle able to really power you around meant that you could take a little bit of time off from the leg work and it was quite enjoyable and it was able to deal with any hills that came up on the ride. So just in general, it's very comfortable and smooth. And although it is a heavy bike, it's well powered. And that suspension means that it's quite nice to ride over bumpy and rough terrain. So who should buy the Magicycle Deer? 
The Magicycle Deer is really going to shine for recreational riders that like to go out riding on mixed terrain and also find themselves sometimes carrying cargo or using it for some other recreational means. It also could see good work as pulling a cart or maybe being used for work or deliveries because it does have a reasonable battery range and quite a bit of power behind the unit. So in general, it's really going to be good for recreational riders. It's not going to be so good for those true e-mountain bikers looking to take it on tighter technical trails, but anyone looking to ride recreational terrain and wants to be able to get out on a mixture of sand, gravel, forest paths, and pavement comfortably, and really have a good time zipping around at high speeds, this is going to be a fun bike. So who shouldn't buy the Magicycle Deer? first group of people who are not going to be interested are going to be those looking for a true e-mountain bike. As we've already mentioned, there's a few features about the bike that are really keeping it from performing in single track trails, and those who are looking for a true e-mountain bike are going to find themselves disappointed. Another group of people who are going to want to be careful are those that don't want a big heavy bike. Smaller individuals or those that just don't want to have to deal with a 100 pound bike are going to probably find the weight cumbersome and challenging to deal with when the bike is unpowered. And finally, I would also be careful for those recreational users that are going to be using this bike off-road regularly because a few aspects of the bike could break down and get damaged if you're planning on using it off-road daily such as those rear pivot points. So if you're not really a recreational rider I think that there might be some other options on the market that might suit your needs better. Let's take a look at the frame of the Magicycle Deer. Now it's offered in two different styles. We've got a low step version and a high step version. The main difference between this is that the low step version is obviously lacking that upper tube and it also has an integrated rear rack as well as fenders on the front and rear wheel. The high step version is lacking that rear rack and those fenders and it looks like it's a little bit more robust and ready for going off road. The version that we have with us today is the low step version. Now the great thing about this is that it's really easy to mount and get onto the bike, not having to swing your leg over that rear rack, especially if you were to have cargo on the rear rack of this bike. And in general, it's a pretty easy bike to get on and to ride. Now we did find that the seat post is not able to adjust to properly fit riders over six feet tall it seems, as I was having a tough time getting proper pedal position even with the seat post fully extended. The other big drawback about this frame that I could see is that at least on the low step model, the two rear pivot points produce a fair amount of flex. When you're riding the bike straight down a level piece of road, if you were to shift your weight left and right repeatedly, you can get a fair amount of wobble. And I would say that this is probably going to start to degrade the bike over the long term. And I would be a little bit worried that this stress point would be a failure. Powering the bike on the back, we have a Magicycle branded 96 Newton meter, 750 watt rated geared brushless motor. Now this rear hub motor is a pretty powerful unit on the back of the bike and it's definitely necessary with the bike weighing up to 93 pounds. In general, I found that the motor was very good. It had a pretty similar performance to the Bafang 750 watt rear hub motor and it was able to easily speed you up to that 25 to 28 mile an hour top speed. I did find that it was quite pleasant on this bike because the throttle was able to actually speed you up to that 25 mile an hour top speed and so it was quite pleasant to be able to use only throttle and reach that max speed as most bikes normally seem to limit the throttle to about 20 miles an hour. Overall, despite the heavy bike, the motor was still able to speed it up to those top speeds and we were able to get a pretty good 0 to 20 and 0 to 28 time. It was also very good in the hill tests. The battery on the Magicycle is large and when fully charged, fairly potent. We're seeing a 52 volt battery on this bike, which is a little bit of a higher voltage than we normally see on a lot of bikes in this price range at 48 volts. So this should offer a little bit more performance from that motor, maybe a little bit more torque, and we should see a little bit of an increased range overall. 
Now we did get a fairly good range out of the bike at the maximum assist level with it coming in at approximately 27 miles of total range, but this did fall far below the company's anticipated ranges of 60 to 80 miles. The battery is charged by a three amp fast charger. And this charger actually has its own integrated cooling fan, which is interesting. We have to assume that's because it's running at a higher 52 volt. Now the battery charges in approximately four to seven hours, which is good for the overall capacity of the battery. Removal and placing the battery into the bike is easy. It's nicely hidden in that down tube and it is attached there via a thumb knob and a key. So removing that battery, you just insert the key into the side of the frame and give it a turn and then you'll fully release that battery with the knob which is located underneath at the top of the battery. You do have to be careful about the placement of the front fork as the battery will only slide in and out of the frame if the front fork is straight and well positioned. The battery is other than that pretty easy to slide in and out of the bike and if you don't want to take that battery off to bring it inside to charge you can charge it through the attached charging port on the upper part of the down tube. The bike has a seven speed drivetrain with a TX50 Shimano shifter and a Shimano Altus rear derailleur. It has a 14 to 28 tooth rear and it has a 48 tooth front crank set on it. Overall, this is a pretty standard setup that we see on a lot of e-bikes, but for some reason on the deer, this gearing felt a little bit misplaced. At the highest gear, I felt like your pedal cadence was quite high and you were really having to pedal quickly to keep up with that speed of the bike. And at its lowest gear, I felt like when you're traveling at the max speed of 28 miles an hour, you were again still pedaling quite quickly to keep up with that. So it really felt like the pedaling was not quite matched well with the gearing and torque of the motor and something just felt off about the overall pedaling of this bike even though the components are very similar to what we see on a lot of other builds. This could be due to the overall weight of the bike and the general geometry not being the most pleasant item to pedal but I think that most of it has to do with that overall weight at 93 pounds and you being able to really get up to about 29 miles an hour at the top range. The braking on the Magicycle Deer is performed with a set of Bengal Aries 3 hydraulic brakes and that has a set of 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. Now these hydraulic brakes use mineral oil so it makes for an easier bleeding process than something using a DOT4 or a DOT5 liquid. Overall I felt like the performance of these brakes was very good and they worked well coming downhill, almost too well in certain situations because it was quite easy to lock up that rear tire and initiate a skid. This kind of has something to do with the overall weight of the bike as well as those 180 millimeter rotors being quite strong so you really have to feather the brakes when using this bike but in braking performance we saw pretty good results in our brake test and when I was out on the trail I never felt like I was having any problem slowing the heavy bike down with those 180 millimeter rotors front and back. During a brake test at 20 miles an hour we achieved a full stop in 27.7 feet. From 28 miles an hour we achieved a full stop in 34.8 feet. We have a set of 26 inch rims with four inch Kenda tires on it. And this is a pretty knobby tire and overall it provided good trail traction. But as I've noted before, it seemed to be quite easy to initiate a slide, whether you were on dirt or pavement. So the wheels and tire choice on this bike seem to be pretty good. It's a fat tire. So you are gonna have to make sure that that will fit into your bike rack and that you can fit it around certain obstacles. It also means that you will have a pretty variable tire pressure that you can utilize with this bike. So we can go anywhere from five to 30 PSI on the tire pressure. And you're gonna notice a pretty significant change in performance based on what you set that tire pressure to. Higher tire pressures are gonna give you less rolling resistance. You're gonna be able to achieve a higher speed, better acceleration, and it will be better on smooth ground like pavement. And if you go with a lower tire pressure, you're gonna be able to get better traction and maybe a little bit of better suspension out of the bike overall, but you may be able to go straight through that tire and ding your rim on harder hits. So it could be an issue. So make sure that you have the right tire pressure with these fat tires. When it comes to safety on the Magicycle Deer, we've got a pretty standard setup. So we're looking at your standard front and rear facing reflector, as well as a nice set of halo reflectors on the sidewall of both the front and rear tire. So that's going to give you some nice visibility at night for drivers. And as well, you've also got a front and rear light. So the front is a headlight and the rear is obviously a brake light, which is going to be tied into your rear brake. And that's going to illuminate when braking, which is a nice additional feature. The front headlight is pretty bright. It's definitely not the brightest of headlights that we've seen, but it's not the dimmest. So it's a reasonable front headlight 
light, but you will probably want to utilize another light on either the handlebars or maybe one on your headlamp if you're going to be doing a lot of night riding with this bike. The other safety feature that this bike has is it does have a brake cutoff switch on both the front and rear brake lever. So as soon as you start to apply the brakes, it's going to disconnect that motor and allow you to come to a stop quickly. The kickstand on the bike is the standard single-sided kickstand that we see on most e-bikes. Moving into the contact points on the Magicycle Deer, we're going to look first at the grips. So for the grips, we have this set of kind of contoured leather grips with the leather stitching that are around the edge. Now I've seen these come out on a few different e-bikes now, some of the cruiser style e-bikes, and personally, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. I hate these grips. I don't find them to be very comfortable. I also find them to be quite slippery on the hands, and they're not a lock-on grip, so you can really get a lot of twist forward and backward with those grips. In general, I'm not a fan, and I think that most people will find that they're gonna swap the grips out on this bike pretty quickly. Moving forward from the grips, we're gonna to get to the seat. Now on the Magicycle Deer, I was a little bit surprised when first finding the seat because it's a much wider and more cushioned seat than you would traditionally find on an off-road mountain bike style bike. It's pretty comfortable to sit and ride on, but it's definitely larger than most off-road seats that you would see if you're coming from a mountain bike background. And finally, we've got those Welgo flat pedals connecting us to the bike at the shoes. And these are honestly a fine set of pedals. They're overall a very inexpensive set, but I think that Welgo does a good job. And I find that those pins on this set of pedals are a nice size where they allow a good stickiness to the bottom of your shoe, but they're not tearing up your shoes and wrecking them and destroying them. So overall, we've got a budget set of Welgo pedals, but I find them to be perfectly fine to get you out there on the trail or the road right away. Magicycle also offers a range of accessories for the bike. These come from everything from locks to bags and panniers, a bike trailer, a different assortments of helmets, and some other accessories. Well, the show's over, and the Magicycle Deer didn't disappear in a puff of smoke. It actually showed that it had a few tricks up its sleeve, with the best of the bunch being that 750 watt powerful rear hub motor. The secondary one was definitely that suspension which made it a smooth and comfortable ride over a variety of mixed terrain. So the Magicycle Deer is really going to be a great bike for recreational riders that want to get out in the off-road environment and ride it in mixed terrain whether you're using it to go and ride on the pavement or over gravel. You're going to have a great time if you can handle that heavy weight at 93 pounds. If you're looking for an e-mountain bike specific unit, you might be able to find better units on the market to handle those single track technical trails. Is this bike for you? Check out bikeride.com to see the full specs and you can also see other user and expert reviews. You can also check out other great bikes and e-bikes and see them rated to find your perfect match. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and a subscribe so we can keep on bringing you great e-bike and bike related content. As always, I'm Scott with bikeride.com reviews. I hope you enjoy the ride.